Okay, uh, hello, shalom, hi everybody. Uh, I would like to start this uh, presentation in uh, dedication to a very good friend of mine, Narea from uh, Brazil, that um, I just learned this past uh, day that she was found dead and she was only 14 years old. Um, so yeah, this, um, this is very important for me to dedicate this for her as a uh, hope and goodness that she spread in the world. Um, so, I'm Daniel Nachmias. I'm a designer and an architect and an entrepreneur. I was born and raised in Jerusalem, uh, and where my majority of my work was been done. I work with uh, green sustainable architecture, with societies, communities, um, and social projects, and also I'm a curator of the matchmaker. For the past three years, uh, I've been working around Brazil and Barcelona, uh, and Jerusalem, of course. Uh, so, Jerusalem, I don't know what you know about the city, but it's a crazy place. Jerusalem is the capital of Israel and its largest and poorest city. It's a city of old and new, of preservation alongside development. It's a mixture of uh, millions of cultures, multicultural city with a wide range of different um, populations. The city is a city of pilgrimage. Pil pilgrims, uh, holy to the three monotheistic um, religions. It was always a strategic place uh, with a history of conflict and war. But along that, it's a home from numerous uh, small trenders, designers, and tons of inspiration. In this diverse and complex place with this mixture of Israelis and Palestinians, of cultures and religions, um, in this big mess, Balagan in Hebrew, we design. So within this context uh, that I work in, I believe that I need to work in a bottom-up kind of approach, connected to the place that I work in and connected to the people. In 2018, Jerusalem Design Week has invited me to curate The Matchmaker. The Matchmaker is a project that pairs traditional craftspeople with contemporary designers in order to produce a new product together. The heart of the project is the stories of the encounter between designers and craftspeople. While the resulting product that emerges is very important, what takes the center of the stage is the extraordinary connection between the people and from the different generations, cultures, disciplines, and ages, of course. You can look at the matchmaker as the tender of design. We tend to come to exhibitions or to see a photo or an art exhibition as a whole, but behind every art exhibition, there are people and stories. We see these old craftspeople in their workshops who tell the story of this ancient city, Jerusalem, with their hands and hearts. We also see young designers, highly skilled with new technology, but lacking the experience of working in traditional ways and moving a local economy with their designs. So what do we do? We match them. For the past few years, there were a lot of uh, editions of the matchmaker, three actually. Every year there's a theme that is coming from Jerusalem Design Week. In 2018, the theme was East. That year, we only worked with Palestinians. The designers were from East Jerusalem and the artisans were from all over the West Bank, Ramallah, Hebron, Bethlehem, and so on. That year, I asked a good friend of mine, architect Tarek Nasser, to come and co-curate with me the exhibition. We, as Israelis who live alongside Palestinians, tend to think we know the culture and the language. But in fact, it's always very important to gain trust and respect and to involve people from the same population, the same culture that we work with in the process. For me, as an Israeli that served in the army in these places, as you see over here with Tarek Nasser in Manara Square in Ramallah, for me, it's a very big thing to be very close to a place that I met uh, in a different kind of context, the army. This is what we're talking about healing. Uh, this year, or in fact, two years, uh, because of Corona, um, the project dealt with culinary. I could not uh, think of a better person to, to co-curate um, the project with me that year than Natalia and Mo, a friend, a chef, and a creative culinary woman who grew up in the city with me. Atalia knows every person of culinary in, the, uh, in Jerusalem, from the smallest, um, smallest places to the biggest factories. She brought us to the middle of the ultra-Orthodox families 
uh, to work with people. And she knows also families that have bakeries. Hmm? Okay. Um, let me be more specific. And perhaps the most inspiring, inspiring match is a small factory in the heart of the old city where workers only speak Arabic and all employees are blind. How can I work with a young designer that doesn't even speak their language? The person who overcame, overcame those challenges is Bauhovitz. It was a very exciting day to walk through the Via Dolorosa in the old city and with a, and enter an 87 year old uh, workshop filled of brooms. However, the real magic happened when we went back to the workshop and met for the first time and introduced between Bar and the work, workers of the Arab Blind Association workshop. Language barriers were obviously a challenge, but slowly and respectfully, uh, they learned to communicate with each other. To know, to know someone, you want to get into their shoes, and that's exactly what Bar did. Her first step was to practice and learn the techniques that the blind people do to work and create their um, brooms and products. And all of this while they're blind. Eh? Just to give you a sense of the ability, eh, of their ab amazing ability, while Bar made one broom, Samir eh, managed to make eight. Ba watched Samir and his friends produce a lot of things over there. She knew that she wanted what she wanted to do. She says, I knew I wanted to make a product that integrates between senses others than sight, like touch and smell. Luckily enough, down the street, there was a, a shop of Ali who sells pu pure fumes. So she took the brooms, fibers, and soaked them in the aromatic oil. And guess what? It works. This is how a fragrance diffusers were born. Uh, experience designed for people who can see, but also for people who can't. So she took the broom fibers, put them inside wooden bases, added aromatic oils, and there she got this. This is fawakh. In Arabic, it means an aromatic smell that fills the air. The natural broom fibers have a specific quality that liquids move upwards against gravity. The decision of the shape is based and inspired by Jerusalem, the city, and its, and its people. Here you can, um, the collaboration opened for us a lot of opportunities and also for the workshop, realizing they can explore and expand a line of products. For me, this was an eye-opening experience and a discovery of all levels of new materials and techniques, but especially a warm human experience where blind people made me see things I've never seen before. They are a blind factor. We worked with us for two years in a row, and we are still in contact with them and help them with new materials. So how do we match the people? We search for the right participants. We are mindful of their skills, their disciplines, their cultural background, language, and gender, of course. Then we mix and match. Once we do so, uh, this is a challenge, of course, the designers and the craftspeople go out of their uh, comfort zone and soon start the process. Meet, for example, Muhammad Mahalwas and Ziad Dabe. One is a, a um, restorator in Al-Aqsa Mosque, and the other is a bamboo craft teacher at the Polytechnical School uh, of the Old City. Did you know there's a Polytechnical School in the Old City? I didn't as well. Don't be surprised. Um, so the story about about this is the people, the people behind the project. Ziad, during the project, had a heart attack and almost died. Muhammad visited him in the hospital and gave him hope and things to do in the hospital. After a long process together, they managed to reach an amazing result. This is the result. This was a touch and go pro uh, process and project, but then with a belief in the people and not in the project itself and not what would come out of it, they did this amazing project that got exhibited in Tokyo and won prizes. Again, I believe you need to believe in people and what they do and not in the end result. Let me give you another example, like this couple. Who will join a 3D expert with a technical clocksmith? You're right, the matchmaker. Michal Levitsky and Ilya Feldman created together lighting fixtures that combine both their skills and their passion. Michal brings her natural 3D printed design to create outer shells of lighting uh, fixtures, while Ilya does the casting, the mechanism, 
and the connections. The result is a series of nature-inspired objects mixing old and new techniques. So what happens when the matchmaker makes a radical fashion designer meet an oriental music instruments builder? They make a collection of never seen before handbags. The bags are made of, out of old instruments and Syrian fabric. Here you can see the design is based on the similarity between music instruments and Arab nuts like pistachios, almonds, and chestnuts. All are made with traditional instruments building techniques and sewing. What's more special about this specific project in person, Shadi, is this is his project from 2018. Shadi is with us for already three years. Uh, the first year in 2018 doing a project, second year being a big brother for his uh, mates and colleagues, uh, Palestinian colleagues. And this year in 2021, he was my assistant as a co-curator uh, as well, and a mediator of, uh, of culture and a, tra a tradition. Um, translator, sorry. Um, this shows how the project has room to grow, uh, to let people be themselves and grow in the project itself. And this is something that is very important for me. And who can match a daughter and her mother to work together and live to tell about it? My son Liam is an architect. <laughs> her mom owns Artesana, a Palestinian embroidery factory in Ramallah that employs more than 250 uh, Palestinian uh, women all over the West Bank. Palestinian embroidery is disappearing from the world and there's no place for this traditional uh, craft. You only see it in events. My soon, for my soon, it was very important to bring it back into our life. So she created desirable objects like partition walls and lighting fixtures that combine embroidery with new crafts. Um, this brings together the, the both sides. Sometimes in order to connect people, you don't need to cross and go over walls and sectors. Sometimes you can simply connect those that are closest, but in the most complex relationships, a mother and her daughter. Other, another interesting project that we got in this year is matching between a young secular Jerusalemite to an ultra-Orthodox grandmother from Masha Arim neighborhood. It's almost impossible to get in to the ultra-Orthodox society. But we did this with thanks to Atalia, my co-curator, um, and her connections, and also the kindness and the goodness that this project brings to the world. Um, we managed to reach Rivka Benvin. Imagine how it is to create and connect and talk in a project that people don't use smartphones. You want to talk about design, saying, I'm smiling. I hear people, I'm smiling, I'm happy. Woo! Um, Imagine how is it to make a project with people that don't use a smartphone. We're regular to send a sketch, say, hey, what do you think about it? There, it doesn't exist. People don't use smartphones. And uh, this was a big challenge, but we overcame it. We know to sew, sew a suit that fits a culturally and it's culturally appropriate for every participant. And this is the way we sustain the project and respect them. In our, I will now quote Talia. In our meetings, Rivka and I had interesting conversations. Our discussion showed the difference between us, but also the connection, understanding, and subjects that we found in common, like handcrafts, Jerusalem, spirituality, marriage life, and parenthood. A subject that raised in our talks that in, and in Rivka's stories was the place of kugel, a traditional dish, traditional Jewish uh, uh, dish, as a festive food representing the spirit of the Shabbat. The kugel corresponds to the values such as closeness and familyhood and togetherness of the Shabbat. Although kugel is simple, cheap food, nevertheless, it represents the festiveness and the family-oriented character of the Shabbat Haredi home. Something that I also, as a secular, secular person, connect with deeply. We decided to create personal bowls for common meals together. Each bowl made by ceramics as a personal per portion. However, it's all connected together and weaved with silicon strings that symbolize the to togetherness, family, and intimacy, but also the tension in the family, and as well as between the different sectors of the Israeli society. 
uh, it's very important also to understand these years with the corona and the COVID, this pandemic, it, the gap between the different sectors in Israel grew, grew bigger. And this is a beautiful project that comes to, again, try to heal and put together and show how, how similar we are, how we're people. Um, you can see it in the material and also in the concept. And that's why I, I love this project so much. Daniel El Kayam and Efrat Giat um, work together. Efrat is a shepherd in Jerusalem. She has a herd of sheep and goats. He is an industrial designer. Today, together, they took an ancient Yemenite embroidery that is owned by um, Efrat's family. You can see it on the left. And to create uh, new models and new molds for making cheese with um, like three-dimensional 3D printing uh, using the patterns of this embroidery. This is very important, again, to show how we can take together um, two different aspects that are very, very far and combine them together through a project. A new language comes to life. Here you can see the result. Conservation versus development. These are cheeses in patterns that are made with 3D printed uh, molds and the same, uh, the same food and ingredients the Efrat uses on a daily basis. And if we're dealing with Yemen and its craft, let me let's look at the next project. This is a story about a falafel stand that passed down from generation to generation. Shai Tzadok's father was a, Ju a Yemenite jeweler. He came to Israel in order to make money and to open a falafel stand, a stand that will later 50 and 60 years later will be a restaurant that's owned by Shai Tzadok. Oad Kabri is a designer researcher and a designer. He did a very amazing tribute. Um, again, I'm smiling, I'm happy. I'm just very, uh, <laughs> very, very uh, uh, happy and um, full of uh, joy to see this. <laughs> um, Oad made a very nice tribute to uh, Shai Tzadok's father and he made a jewelry made out of leftovers from the falafel stand. Here you can see the deep uh, and amazing process they went together. Sometimes it's always, it, sometimes it's hard for people to understand what would be the end result. This was the story about this project. Um, Ohad dried, baked, salted, and worked with a lot of preservation and goldsmith techniques to create a collection of Yemenite jewelry from his falafel stand scraps. Maybe this is what went through Shlomo, Shai's father, 60 years ago when he sold falafel to people. And now I want to take you from one falafel stand to another. Let me take you from Jerusalem and fly straight to Brazil, to the state of Bahia and Caraiva, to Dia de, Dia de Falafel, that our friend Narea loved so much and took part in. As a part of my journey to Brazil, I discovered an amazing person who started a project that we didn't know ourselves what will soon become. Yoavi, or Joavi, like the locals say, started making falafel for his friends in Shando. Yoavi threw a welcome party for me with falafel. And since, for more than eight months, we've been making falafel to the community of Karaiva and Shando every Friday for free, just because we want to give back to the world. It's simple and delicious. We bring the food, the place, and the platform. You bring yourself, your drinks, and your culture or art. Everybody is invited. We made everything ourselves, natural and vegan, healthy and nutritious. The falafel mix, the pita dough, the tahini, Yoav's famous um, onion and eggplant sauce that came from his mom, schug, a Yemenite kind of spicy sauce, and salads. This is not obvious in a world of industrial food, empty of nutritious values, and in, ge in, in general, in a culture that's based on meat. All of the get-togethers get are based on meat and doing a barbecue, for example. From the, exa like, from the oil that's been left over, we made soap. And everything was bought from local agriculture production. Dia de Falafel has become the most talked about event in Caraiva and fed hundreds of people every Friday. Soon enough, people more and more people have arrived and more than so people came earlier and earlier to come and help make the falafel to learn the skill of how to make your own nutritious food 
This is where Naraya and her sister and her father came and took a lot of part in this and donated with their hearts and a big smile to this amazing project. We passed through Jambrero, Chandon. We made deliveries to all our neighbors in the area. Finally, we reached the remote beach in Satu, where the last falafel took place before I came back here to Israel. Today, nowadays, even during the cyclone in Brazil now, you can see Yoavi in the streets of Chandon walking with falafel and giving it to uh, the neighbors every Friday. We refused to sell the falafel and the pizza and the uh, pita bread, despite dozens of offers. Soon enough, this falafel became a place of democracy. People came to celebrate their life, their culture, to celebrate with us food and getting together in this time of Corona, where you know everybody is so distant. Everybody just came there, and it was just an amazing show and party to be in. Soon enough, um, we got a, published in a very new and cool um, magazine of uh, Food Design Nation, and the first um, and the first uh, issue of it, the, the, the democratization of food and culture is something so important, especially in Brazil and for us as people in the world. Giving without consideration, um, stubbornness and consistency, human love and generosity, all of this go through our project if it's the matchmaker or if it's Dia de Falafel in Brazil. I think there's a room for everybody to come, create, do, work, and just be. And this is kind of the, the message I want to bring today to the people. Just be good. Um, I will finish with a small thought that I had yesterday. Being a designer is a huge responsibility. Being a designer in Jerusalem or in Brazil reinforces this responsibility a dozen times more. We have the power in our hands, a power to connect, to create bridges, to influence our society that more than we think. So let's use this power wisely to match and design a better world. Um, that's me. That's the matchmaker. Uh, you're more than welcome to uh, come and uh, follow me on Instagram, follow the matchmaker. And I hope uh, that all of us will... Uh, spread the good and kindness in the world and thank you for listening to me and thank you for inviting me and yeah <laughs>